Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha. You know how to subscribe or ask a question, which I will flip in here for you guys. And uh, he's saying, Jason, uh, what is someone supposed to do if scoliosis prevents them from squatting or deadlifting? What's their alternatives? So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Do a little bit of crafting, see if I can skill up a little bit here, and uh, let's talk about that. All right, guys, here's the thing uh, that people need to understand when it comes to training around back injuries, dealing with back injuries, dealing with back problems. And scoliosis is obviously something you're born with, and I've had several friends who've had it over the years. Um, I've worked out with people who've had it. Uh, I know a competitor who is, by the way, a lot stronger than me on the deadlift who has it. Um, so I've been around it a bit, but truth be told, 99% of YouTubers, 99% of coaches, 99% of personal trainers have no fucking business giving people advice who have back problems. We're not qualified. I am not personally qualified. So what I'm going to tell you first and foremost is understand the risk involved and you need to be talking with uh, a specialized physical therapist on this. Now I can give you advice a little bit around that, but the thing is, if you don't have a physical therapist involved, uh, I sure as hell don't want anyone taking my advice in place of a physical therapist. Don't do it. Uh, because again, back injuries can be permanent. I mean, and you guys want examples of people even educated who don't have the right credentials. Look at Lane Norton. Look how fucked up his back is. And every physical therapist and the coach in the world knows that guy doesn't know what he's doing and he keeps injuring his back. Uh, and he's probably going to be crippled in a wheelchair before long. Um, so, uh, I wouldn't even take his advice on working around back injuries unless you want to be fucked up. So think about that for a minute. Now, scoliosis is kind of one of those unique things, and this is why it's very hard for anyone to give advice based on scoliosis. Now, I'm going to tell you guys what people I've known personally done to work around theirs, but you know what? Each case of scoliosis is different. They're different from person to person. So if you can't even go to a physical therapist and say, hey, I have scoliosis, what should I do? They can't give you good advice based on that. Why? Because they haven't seen your x-rays yet. A specialist who works in that area is gonna to need to see your individual x-rays because the amount of curvature and problems caused by scoliosis in your spine uh, is dramatically different from person to person who has it. It's not the same amount of problems with spine curvature in every person who has it. it. It differs. So you can't just say, hey, this is what you could do. Um, you know, because it, you, they don't know how serious it is until so they look closer. Now, as far as people I've known who had scoliosis, I had a friend who really couldn't squat with his. He had it really bad. Um, he had a couple of problems uh, growing up. Uh, and I've been friends with him for many, many years. Uh, we, we don't speak much lately these days. Uh, but I was friends with him all the way until around 2001. Very, very close friends. Um, and I believe he's now a lawyer. But yeah, he had severe scoliosis, but he was still actually able to leg press. Now he tried to squat a bit, um, but he quit because he started noticing he felt like it was giving him problems. His doctor felt like he was giving him problems. So he had to quit squatting and he didn't deadlift. So what he generally did was he did a lot of leg pressing. Uh, and the guy could rip out a thousand pounds on the leg press, by the way. Uh, so he was no he was no wimp on it. And I know a lot of us who leg press in the past or leg press heavy say, okay, thousand pounds isn't that impressive, um, but it's not really bad either. Uh, and he wasn't a serious uh, lifting enthusiast. He came in and he trained a bit. And he just wanted to get stronger, lose a little bit of weight because he was overweight. And uh, yeah, it worked well for him. Uh, it helped him get into shape quite a bit to get in and do everything. He did train legs, did do cardio, uh, but he leg pressed, and I think he did some hack squats. He had to do machine-assisted hack squats. The main thing that you're looking for when people have severe scoliosis like he did is like you're, you're saying, find workarounds, find exercises you can do that don't load your spine up, all right, that don't load your spine up, and which you need to be aware of, uh, even machines like the leg press, you do need to be aware that if you do them in the wrong positions, meaning you allow your pelvis to tuck under too much on certain foot angles and things on the leg press, that it can cause problems. So what I would recommend if you have scoliosis and you want a leg press, again, after your physical therapist or doctor has cleared it, again, I can't stress that enough, guys. When you got a problem like that, you need to keep your medical professionals in the loop, get their advice, because again, you really damage your back, you can find yourself with irreparable problems. Uh, so again, you always need to consult those specialists no matter what. 
but you need to look at the leg press maybe film yourself doing the leg press look at different foot positions you're going to find some foot positions will roll your hips and pelvis under more than others um, just be aware of that and you don't want large amounts of, of hip roll happening uh, because you don't want curved like a, a curve the wrong direction I mean um, your hips roll forward in a curve and your lower back going towards the front. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, I don't want to give all the correct terminology because people who are asking this probably don't know it. So that's what you're looking for is a curve um, instead of an arch in your lower back on your leg press based upon where your foot position is. Um, you could look at it the same way with a hack squat. Again, video yourself. Find foot positions on these machines that minimize the stress on your lower back because that is what you're concerned with. People with scoliosis, you've got an irregular curve in your spine and it can be very delicate for some people. Uh, some people more delicate than others, but it is a very serious source of potential injury. So that's what you need to look at. You're gonna have to do machine lifts very possibly. Um, and you know, that is gonna be your safest bet because you just can't risk uh, damaging your spine. It's simply not worth it. That's my opinion, by the way. My opinion is it's not worth taking the risk. Now, I know people who disagree. I know someone who, uh, in a lighter weight class than me, uh, who I've competed with a couple times at meets, really nice, awesome guy, awesome young man, um, who has scoliosis, okay? In a lighter weight class than me, he was out deadlifting me. Now, that doesn't say much. I mean, I'm a decently strong deadlifter, but I'm by no means world-class level deadlifter, uh, but I'm pretty decent, pretty decent for an old guy. You guys watched me wrap up 500 for seven without a belt the uh, last month. Uh, my max is probably well over six. Anyone could calculate that on a calculator based on my gym lifts. But this guy was pulling over six, weighing like something like 180. He was somewhere in that range. So uh, by most standards, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, pretty damn impressive. And he did it with scoliosis. It didn't actually hold him back. I actually had served in the military uh, with scoliosis as well. So this is someone who worked around his problem uh, very successfully. And again, you don't serve in the military and you don't go pulling over three times your body weight on deadlift with scoliosis without being a little bit of a badass. So that being said, where is he at now? Uh, last time I was updated, his back is starting to give him problems. So he's someone who did take the risk. Knew he had scoliosis, went for glory, uh, was successful, was successful, but it's coming at a price. He is having back problems now as a result of it. And I hate to see that because he's, he's one of those guys that um, he's very motivational. Uh, you don't even know till he posts x-rays or stuff sometimes on social media that he has scoliosis or a back issue because you see the guy deadlift, you're like, holy shit. Uh, and the dude is just genuinely nice. So it kind of sucks to see that happen because the guy's real chill, real nice. Um, but, you know, he gives 100% in competition and in training. But the price that guy's paying, he is having some problems with his back now. And last I heard, uh, he might be needing a surgery on his back. Uh, and it could it's very possibly as a result of the amount of extra compressive stress on there from the scoliosis. You know, and he took that risk and it looks like it's hurting him now. Uh, and I don't know what that means for his future lifting. I have no clue. Uh, but that is the risk that you've got to be aware of. You could have scoliosis and go on to be a champion. But you do need to be aware that compressive stress on your back could come at a very, very costly price. And I can't tell you if it's worth it or not. That's not my place. But I will tell you the risk is there. The risk is there. And so for people who aren't willing to take that risk, you're simply going to have to do machines that avoid training uh, putting impressive stress on the lower back. Now, here's the problem. I would tell most people, well, if you want to protect your back, do work for your spinal erectors and extra core work and ab work. But that's the problem. Uh, without knowing the specifics of your scoliosis, I can't tell you if that's safe or not. Uh, and you know what? Even if I saw your x-rays, I still am not qualified. And no other YouTuber is either. So anyone telling you they know, fuck those guys. Go ask your physical therapist. And your physical therapist is going to be the one who's going to be able to tell you what sort of core work you can do to strengthen your core to maybe reduce risk to your lower back or just reduce risk uh, to your middle back, to your thoracic region and things. Um, but they're the ones who are going to have to tell you that. 
but if you can get your core and all those muscles stronger, it's always going to be protective to your back no matter what injuries you have, no matter what deformations you have. But the problem becomes when you're dealing with a back issue, you have to have someone who's qualified to tell you what core work you can safely get away with and what you can't. Uh, and that just is what it is. Uh, you're not going to get around that back. Don't ever go to the internet for advice on something like that. Go talk to a professional. All right, guys, but that's uh, really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.